You've been gone for a while. You're back. I was gone for three days. That's not a while. Mm, it felt like a long time to me. Jason takes two weeks off. It was three last time. Oh, you're right. Three weeks. What would happen if I would take three weeks off? Would he even miss me? He would miss you so much. Am I his emotional support executive producer? You totally are. <laughs> I'll wear a harness for a free first class upgrade. <laughs> If I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Jason show everybody I'm Jace let's start with this we are already all are already approaching the middle of March but for one bird it's always the 21st night of September watch Kiki. yeah that is audience yeah well if you if you haven't caught on yet, that's Kiki the cockatiel, and that bird can't stop whistling to Earth, Wind, and Fire's 1978 song September. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the the owner of Kiki describes it as a little frustrating, just a little frustrating. If you don't want Kiki, we'll take Kiki here at the studio. We'll take Kiki. Yeah. Cue the music, and I wonder what song it will be. There we go. That's right. Ooh, got a headache from that. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kendall Mark, everybody. One of my favorite songs. Favorite songs. So good. Oh. Absolutely one of my favorite songs ever. I wanted Kai to be born on this day so that I could sing this to him all the time. He was you, five oh, days earlier. But he went because okay. when was Kai born? He was, well, he was born four days earlier, so September 17th. But that was like my big plan was like hold out until the Please. 21st. Come on. It is That's also good. September is my favorite song. You know, there's a ride at Walt Disney World. That's my favorite ride called Guardians of the Galaxy. And you can listen to possibly six different songs. Yes. This song is one one of the best on that ride. If you get it, if you ride that ride, you're very lucky. How you doing? If you're like me, you're going, what? I don't understand. Oh, like yeah. The ride thing, I don't, I don't It's fine. It. I'll take you one okay. day. Thank How you. How you doing, though? How was your weekend? I'm great. It was good. I went to the eye doctor. Congratulations. Thank you. I know. Thank you. An exciting, exciting weekend in the Kindle household. <laughs> That's you. right. Thank you. Are you, I don't know, audience, tell me if you're like me. It usually doesn't bother me, but I think it's because I'm, I'm, you know, knocking on death's door. Oh, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Daylight saving time yeah. has not. Thank you. See, the audience is with me. What? It did. It, uh, day, daylight saving time has messed me up. Like it messed me up yesterday. Are you sure I'm, that was I'm, what messed you up? I, I, it is what messed. <laughs> It's fine. I know. No, I... A little bit of that, too, but I'm saying I just, yeah. But, no, it, I, I was worthless yesterday. I don't think I got out of my soft pants. And then, and, and then today, I'm a little... Today, I'm a little tired. Like, I... Yeah, I, I... Well, I would like to say it was my first one with an infant. Oh. Daylight saving. It was totally fine. He was fine. It was fine. It was fine. Everything I, was fine. I, yeah. I, I was like, it's fine. 
Thank I you. don't know why. I don't think, I know it's a debate that the Jason Show will not solve. Yes. We need to get rid of this crap. It, we, why? We, uh, yeah. We need to get rid of it. It's not that big of a deal. I don't want the sun to rise, though, at like 3.30 in the morning in the summer. Are you, what are you, in the fields picking corn? What do you mean? What do you mean? Why sorry. do you care? Because the lights, the light in your bedroom, it's harder to, I don't want to, I want to sleep when I can sleep. Um, what? Three words. Blackout drapes. Oh, yeah. Just you're, you're good. <laughs> TJ Maxx has them. Two words. It's blackout drapes. Just three words. Let's get started, everybody. <laughs> it's time for the hotness. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. Blackout's one word. Blackout's one word, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, oh, blackout. <laughs> blackout's right. one word. Don't email yeah. me. I just, I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Uh, dear Jason, I just you want won. you to know, Kendall was right and you were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> My story of my life. Uh, award season is over for another year after uh, Sunday night's Oscars. That's right. We're actually very happy around here. Yeah. Okay. Several new things. I have so much to. I have so many. I have so much feedback uh, for the Oscars. Several things were new this year, including starting an hour earlier. Thank you. Wonderful. ABC. If you put it back to the old time, I'm gonna come over there and slap you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't you touch it, ABC. You leave it right where it is right now. Anyway, but one thing that stayed the same uh, was host Jimmy Kimmel. He's back for the fourth time. Here's a little bit of his monologue. I'll critique afterwards. In 1976, Jodie Foster is young enough to be Robert De Niro's daughter. Now she's 20 years too old to be his girlfriend. <laughs> Favorite joke of the night. Favorite joke of the monologue, yeah. Uh, so for the most part, Jimmy's monologue was pretty tame. Uh, he got actually progressively as the night went on. And I loved this. He did pay respects to the behind-the-scenes folks, to the Teamsters Union, for supporting the actors and the writers during their strikes last year. Now, we have so much to get to. I, I will just say this. I, I like Jimmy, and I know that um, we're in an era that if because of Jimmy's politics, Half of you don't like him. You're predisposed to not like him. I get it. But I'm just judging him on the show. And it wasn't my favorite monologue of his. It felt, I, and I felt this way about a little chunk of the show, it felt a little off. Like, it, it just, I don't know. I, I felt rushed at the beginning. And I, in a lot of his jokes, I, I, I giggled, but I didn't laugh out loud. Hmm. Jimmy's getting a little flack online for jokes uh, that he made about eventual winner Robert Downey Jr. Now during his monologue Jimmy referenced Robert's past battle with drugs uh, and several arrests and some jail time and as you can see that's how Robert handled it. He joked around with it and Robert didn't care but the people over it and I'm, I'm changing the name of BuzzFeed to Buzzkill. Uh, no matter they... <laughs> it's so true. Yeah, wet noodle. They they just hate horrible. everything and oh god I mean you you pearl clutching couch fainters mm -hmm. settle down God everything is not a ten right. everything is not a ten you make yeah. big that's all you do I used to love Buzzfeed but we're we're changing the name now on this mm -hmm. you're called Buzzkill yeah. I swear anyway. There's been, uh, there's also some online chatter. We're trying to cover all the drama for you. There was also some online chatter about what Emma Stone said after one of Jimmy's jokes during the show. Jimmy referenced a clip from Emma's movie, Poor Things, saying that they couldn't show too many scenes from the movie on ABC. And Emma, they cut to a shot of Emma, and she was caught mouthing something snarky back at Jimmy in return. It's a word that they would prefer I don't say. And to Emma, I say, if that is, if, and I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt, maybe she was being jokingly snarky to Jimmy, yeah. because I know that Emma has been defensive, that she doesn't want the movie Poor Things to just be defined by the sex scenes. But girl, have you seen your movie? I mean, it's like, I, it's a lot of sex. Oh, yeah. And I, it's naked and there's body parts and it's just a lot. And I'm sorry, Emma. Lighten up if you did take it's just a joke about a movie and it's a joke that we would make of like oop we're on a network we can't show a lot of your movie you're taking yourself and the movie way too seriously and it's not a good look if it's in fact what you meant one of the best speeches of the night came with the first award best supporting actress I'm so grateful to all you beautiful people out here 
For, for so long, I've always wanted to be different. And now I realize I just need to be myself. And I thank you. I thank you for seeing me. I loved her. That's so good. You know, I... I absolutely, you all know I told you, out of all the Oscar nominated movies, The Holdovers was my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, Barbie, Barbie I like too. Uh, oh God, my mom was so mad. She kept texting me, why isn't Barbie winning anything? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, Dar, I'm not in the Academy, I love. Know. I don't know. <laughs> I love my mom. Anyway, but, but Holdovers I loved and her performance, yeah. Uh, she should have won. I'm glad she won. Mm -hmm. uh, did you? Didn't you like that moment? It was the most. I think the most like genuine, beautiful moment of the whole show. And it started everything off then with a bang because it was just so sincere. And I, I mean, I might have teared up a little bit. I did too. It was so and, sweet. And I know it was long, but you guys, you noticed it was some good producing. I know everyone went, "Wow, are we gonna have to sit through all of these past winners talking about the nominees?" Yeah, but did you notice they sped up other things because they knew that the big acting categories would be more special, which right. they should be. I, for one, loved seeing five past winners all on the screen at the same time. The it was lifted. cool. It was dramatic. I love the staging of it with the yes. big monitors coming up and there's freaking Jessica Lange and right. uh, Mahershala Ali and mm -hmm. Nutty Nutty Nicolas Cage and you know Wait, what I mean? Morano. And Sally Field was there. Malin was there. I, I thought yeah. that aspect of the producing was good. Beautiful. We have a lot more to say about the Oscars, plus a really, really weird taste test a little bit later. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Oscar Monday. We're back. It's pretty. Looks good on camera. It's our birthday club. Thanks to Grand Casino. Oh, we love Grand Casino. Hey, sign up for the birthday club. All you have to do is go to eventbrite.com. Uh, I love that we, we we stayed on the shot of you two in the front row. I'm sorry. Um, I know, but I, I, they we're sitting there. We should have had them wave or something. I don't know. Anyway, eventbrite.com. Uh, sign up like you normally would for the show, uh, but there's a section where you can indicate that it is your birthday. There we go. Welcome back, everybody. We love our birthday people. Uh, welcome back. There are several memorable moments as we continue to talk about the Oscars from Sunday night. At one point, Jimmy wanted to remember the anniversary of the famous streaker uh, <laughs> moment at the Oscars, I believe, in 74. So John Cena stripped down to give away uh and this was yeah and this this is what i love can i mention this for a second this was another good thing of producing did you guys notice and this is where they knew how to land the joke john didn't mention that he was giving away the costume category yeah. until right there i know it's a subtle thing Great but i'm writing. like I, i'm thinking of the producing i'm like oh that's brilliant producing mm -hmm. that he walked out there and then to land the line of and i'm here to give out costumes was <laughs> was a great great move by the producers ryan gosling pulled out all the stops he was so fun all night he was just, he looked like he was having, I liked Great his time. tux. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he pulled out all the stops to perform his Oscar-nominated song, I'm Just Ken. Here's a little bit of it. I'm just Ken. Legend Slash joining him on uh, joining him on the stage for the song. I, this is my uh, Colin said this to me right when this was over. Colin said, "Now see, this is what all these award shows should inject throughout mm -hmm. uh, a fun, great moment like that. You Why know, not? again, produce produce it so that there are fun." Um, moments of levity right. that everyone can cheer for. That was, see, I talked about possibly Emma Stone taking herself too seriously. Mm -hmm. That's Ryan Gosling doing literally the exact opposite. Loved Leaning it. into the fact that he played mm -hmm. a 
plastic doll, okay. you know, and right. having fun with it. Right? I love that. And Guillermo's like, I got everyone tequila. I'm going to cheers everybody. And he starts, like, <laughs> go. And he really did. It was hilarious. Oh, and yeah, that was one moment that I didn't say. Yeah. I didn't even say it on either show. My favorite little fun moment was when he looked and he goes, and I would like to... Uh, Cheers to my wife, my Charlize wife. Theron. And yeah, Charlize, like Charlize's face is like, what? Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I love Guillermo. There was also, this was another great funny moment. Uh, there was also a Batman reunion of sorts oh. when Arnold Schwarzenegger, who played Mr. Freeze, and Danny DeVito, who played the Penguin, presented an award. This was so good. Watch, everyone. I mean, he's here. I hate him. There he is. I hate he's right here. <laughs> he's right here. Look. You have a lot of nerve to show your face well, yeah, you here. Got, you know. Son of a you are a real beak breaker. Oh, I'm going to see you after the governor's ball. You better believe it. Pal. <laughs> That's great. You see my... Keaton is so cool. Keaton's just like, come on. Come on. Come on, come on. <laughs> Oh, see again, the, just yes. Reu did you notice again the reunions? We want it's a, a twins reunion. Mm -hmm. People love that. If they don't, it's a way to bring all of you into a year where maybe you didn't watch a lot of the mm -hmm. movies. Bring them in with nostalgia. Reunite right. casts of big movies that we all love. Right. It's it's smart producing to do right. that. Like when Kate McKinnon then was talking about documentaries and was like like Jurassic Park, and then she brings in and talks Steven about Spielberg. How Spielberg and Spielberg just goes along with it. We yeah. love that. Kate McKinnon said uh, she keeps sending partially nudes, partially tasteful, nu nudes. tasteful nudes <laughs> to somebody named Steven, and it cut to Steven yeah. Spielberg, and it was and great. Like, it's me. And again, Steven was in on the joke yeah. and laughed. It was there were great moments like that. Yeah. Finally, another great acceptance speech. We all loved this in the office. Uh, it wasn't funny. But it made, it made all of us go, he's absolutely right. We're talking about the writer and director of American fiction, which I'm going to see. I, I want to watch it this week. Cord Jefferson is his name. He won for Best Adapted Screenplay and encouraged Hollywood to take more chances. Listen to this. I understand that this is a risk-averse industry, I get it, um, but it, $200 million movies are also a risk, you know, and, and, and it doesn't always work out, but you take the risk anyway. And instead of making one $200 million movie, try making 20 $10 million movies. The next Martin Scorsese's out there, the next Greta, Greta's out there, both Greta's, the next, the next Christopher Nolan's out there, I promise you, they just want a shot and we can give them one, and this has changed my life. Thank you all. I love his speech. I love that. He's right. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, why not give these new people an opportunity when it's going to cost you, to his point, so much less than some of the bombs? And a lot of these stars, you know, they're talking about finance. Oh, we're not going to get a star to accept that uh, salary. A lot of these stars will accept an offer of the back end. You know, we'll pay you... $500,000 or whatever, but right. if the movie is a success, we'll give you a piece of the back end. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that these people that don't have to worry about money would do a movie as a passion project. They would. Oh, yeah. you did, they would absolutely. The Tom, all the big names have done passion projects mm -hmm. where they've gotten next to nothing. Right. He's, I, just, I really do hope, and Hollywood should listen, because a lot of their $200 million movies uh, are in the turlet. I mean, you know what I mean? Honestly. You know, I'm looking at you, Madam Webb. Anyway, uh, yeah. Ooh, just saying. More dish now. Anyone who's watched, oh. Yeah, we're stepping away from the Oscars because we can't not cover this today. Anyone who's watched The Crown ever on Netflix knows that the royal family is like cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Uh, but we may need a new season of the show just to cover like the last three days. Uh, like We need a whole other season. And it calls for... Oh, no, she didn't. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yes, she did. Yeah. So, here's the deal. Uh, <laughs> here's the deal. And this is... It's replaced the story of the Oompa Loompa as my favorite story. The latest drama has to do with a, with a simple picture. Now, everybody watch this. Meant to try and dispel any rumors about Kate, Princess of Wales. Well, over the weekend, Kensington Palace released this picture on social media saying it was Kate, it was Kate who took, uh, who, it was Kate who took the photo, or it was Kate and her three children celebrating Mother's Day in the UK. Well, it was supposedly the first image of Kate since her mysterious abdominal surgery. But immediately, people called out several Photoshop mistakes. And that led... 
And then here's where it gets real juicy. That led to some big name news agencies, including the Associated Press and Getty Images, pulling the image because they didn't trust it because of Photoshop concerns. So early Monday morning, the princess apologized for any confusion of her edits to the photo. In a post, the princess said, quote, just like many amateur photographers, <laughs> I do, I do occasionally uh, experiment with editing. Yeah, as, yeah. As soon as the allegations of Photoshop spread, uh, surfaced, the internet did what the internet does and started with the memes. Here's our favorite. <laughs> That is, of course, that is, of course, my beloved friend, the Oompa Loompa bartender from the Willy Wonka experience in Scotland. Okay. If you watch the show, you know that I tend not to, I don't wear an aluminum foil hat. Every I, day. I try not to, not every day. Mm -hmm. I try not to give in into conspiracy theories. Right. I really don't. I try to think about it, especially with the job that I'm in. Um, but I gotta tell you, mm -hmm. this smells, something in the cooler smells and it ain't the beer. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And, uh, and to the princess, Leo, can you say camera five? Hi, your majesty. Um, you gotta like bow, I think. My name is Jason. I'm just a simple gay from Minnesota. <laughs> there is no way you know how to use Photoshop. I'm just saying, I just, I, there is, there is no way you're in the She's Adobe cloud. She is not, she, what? She's a photographer. She's you mean to tell me she has an Adobe Creative Cloud account? She might. She's a photographer. I think it's all, I mean, it's. Princess Kate is not at Panera on Facetune, uh, tuning up the pictures. Whatever. She ain't doing that. Well, I mean, this whole thing, and the whole reason it's like people You are love this story. Oh, God, I love this. I, I know. sent the biggest, biggest email about it last night. So the big thing here is that since the Queen has passed, a lot of people think, like, the royal family is in these kind of iffy, yes. wishy washy waters. Then all of a sudden, their fate, one of the most beloved peoples of the family is just disappeared, and no one will tell you what's going on. And you can say it's her private life, da -da 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 -da. but the taxpayers in the UK pay for her life, plus King Charles is currently battling cancer and is very open with it. It's just weird how nothing is well, coming out of this. No one has seen her. And then Photoshop comes out. We're like, Rapunzel, well, grow down your long hair. Like, she's trapped in a tower. Well, not only that, but that photo is obviously, that photo is obviously old. First, her yeah. flowers blooming. Mm -hmm. And if you look in the back, Queen Elizabeth's back there somewhere. Yeah, I mean, she's like, that photo's real old. With a cup of tea. She's back there. It's real old. Uh -huh. Like, the clothes those kids are wearing are from a couple seasons ago. You know. They wear Gucci now. No, they're not. not. They're the shears. Season. But, I, yeah. But little Charlotte's arm mm -hmm. is like this. I, it's just real weird. I it's don't know. It's just odd. And the fact that they, so a couple of uh, presses over in the UK have said, okay, well then just release the unedited photo. And the house, the royals are like, no. Yeah. Princess, what? Get on your go, get on your Adobe account and yes. go. Because I have Adobe, go under past projects, uh -huh. and then just send me the raw. Just send me the yeah. raw photo, okay? Just put it to bed. Just put yeah. it to bed. Well, <laughs> We all, we all know how to use Adobe around here. Just go under. I'll show you right here. Just go yeah. under past projects. Uh -huh. Oh, can I add you in my Adobe? Yeah, I'll add you. We're Bjorn's on my account. Jeff is. We're here to help. Because if you know how to use Adobe, you can help with Jason Show Graphics, too. We really we appreciate the help. Yeah. Well, we'll get you through email. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. Yeah. You do our YouTube graphics. Pickle jelly beans, gross chips, space Oreos? We're doing another Jason Show taste test. And then, there is so much hot dish today, we have leftovers. And it's Monday, so we are hearing from you when we open up the mailbag. That and more when we come back. Welcome back to the show. It's time for another Jason Show treat. <laughs> what am I? Jason Show. Is he okay? Do I need it? Is he stroking out? What's happening? Okay. I'm just so excited. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. I'm just so excited. I'm waiting for Princess Kate's email. That's all I'm excited about, yeah. <laughs> On my Adobe account, yeah. <laughs> it's time for another Jason Show taste test. Thank you, yeah. Today, Kendall and I are going to try some crazy new food items that we think we should try before you buy them and hate them. Yeah, so, okay. You're welcome. So, uh, here we go. We have, we have a wide variety today. We have chips and jelly beans and cookies and cotton candy. And we are going to start. Should we start with the chips there, my love? Oh, please. Okay. This is a, a, a potato chip flavor that just hit stores this week. This is not a joke. It's a partnership. Yeah, the audience is grossing out here. It's a partnership between IHOP and Lay's, and they're only available at Walmart. Um, they are, and I'm not joking, Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity Strawberry Pop, <laughs> Strawberry Top Pancakes with Syrup and Bacon Flavored Chips, okay? I'm loving my friend in the third row. She's like, uh-uh, I ain't doing this, yeah. You go first, okay. I just tried one. Uh, you go, you've you, already tried one? Yeah, well, you were reading, it took a long time, so I just tried oh, one. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Wow, sorry. I, no, no, I meant the name. Look oh. at that name. It takes forever to get. I thought it was disgusting. <laughs> They're kind of good. You went for a second? Oh, the aftertaste is so bad, though. Just wait. It's the aftertaste. You like it. Oh, God. You like it. You like it, don't you? I like them. <laughs> Taste. Wait for it. Don't wait too long though, because it's gonna hurt mm. your mouth. You taste right. the bacon yet? No, you don't taste any bacon. Oh. Yeah. To quote Leslie Miller, our wine diva, it has a bacon finish. <laughs> That's right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not joking. You, no, no, no. Before you eat the bean, sorry. I'm you excited. honestly don't like those? No, I actually hate them entirely. I oh. love them. They're disgusting. Y'all saw my face when I put them in my mouth. I didn't I, like it. Yeah. Okay. Uh -uh. Um, let's move on. Next, the next new food item, a new flavor of jelly beans. Uh, this is pickled flavored jelly beans. This is from the Clausen people. So, now have you eaten these yet? <laughs> what? Stick your nose Why in are that. you, what's that scream for? Oh. Cause. <laughs> Are you sure we got to eat it? Is that part of the job? Wait. By the way, we okay. We will. We will. These no, are, we won't. These are at Target, by the way. Okay, here we. You have to do more than one. You bear. That's uh, no. You do it. You do more. Okay, than here we one. go. Ready? No. Cheers. No. Cheers. You, you do it. I'm not doing it. That thing is nasty. It smells like death. <laughs> Told you. Uh uh. Uh uh. in my mouth no, we, just, just swap, because we're going to go to the next one. It's fine. Um, oh, my God. Mom, I, where's No, the that's cup? really bad. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. off stage. That, that's real bad. That's not good at all. Can we go to all. the next one? Yeah, let's go to the next one. Okay. This one's another Target find. One of the latest new Oreo flavors is Oreo Space Dunk. Oh, God. It has blue and pink uh, cosmic cream marshmallow filling with popping candies in it. Oh. It's a different sensation. <laughs> Get a little all over the place over there. Oh my god, it's still going. It's like Pop Rocks. You guys remember Pop Rocks? I don't know what to do with my... <laughs> it's like a party in your mouth. <laughs> it's a party in your mouth, people. Tastes like a first date. <laughs> no, no, I just mean no. <laughs> <laughs> when you kiss somebody you in the mean? spark, the popping. God, you perverts. I just mean, because it has popping candies. When you kiss someone for the first time and there's, it's electric. It's not getting better. He's a married man, everybody. A happily married man. I haven't had a first date in years, so. <laughs> oh, my God. It's still popping, though. Like, I don't know how I feel um, about this. So, yes. Hell no, yes. It's still popping though. I know. <laughs> Make it stop. Okay, two odd flavors of cotton candy will wrap us up. This is a <laughs> this is a company out of Iowa that makes ranch cotton candy. Oh. 
as well as jalapeno cotton candy. You do the jalapeno. <laughs> I don't have a, a cleansing thing to cleanse my palate, but that's fine. Use a pickle. That's fine, yeah. <laughs> okay, which one are you doing first? Ranch. Ranch, and I'll do the spicy jalapeno. It doesn't, it doesn't smell like anything. Does this smell like jalapeno? No, it doesn't smell like anything. I mean, oh. <laughs> That, you know what, that's fun. That, no, that's fun. Okay. <laughs> Is that all it would take? No. <laughs> that's all it took? Anyway, you don't like this? Okay. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do like, it. I actually, can we just we can get no, this away I'm gonna from do my it. face? No, you ate it, a fair is fair. I honestly feel like I did when I was pregnant and I just was so revolted by things, I couldn't like be by them. That's horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> This, this, this should not be sold in the country. This is... It should be illegal. There we go. Another Jason Show taste test, everybody. It's so bad. We're going to take a break. Yeah, we'll be right back. Back in a moment. Oh. Yeah, I'm, that was real, real bad. I'm like, I'm literally never bad. doing that with you again. What is happening over there? Oh, are they eating the stuff now? Why the audience is eat eating that? the stuff. Yeah, Why it's not you, good. Did I know. Did you think we were lying? Wait, 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 wait. wait. It, have they had the ranch thing yet? No. Oh, wait till they have that. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, with the Oscars and so much else going on, the hot dish, the pan was overflowing. So today we're coming back for a seconds with our hot dish leftovers, everybody. Okay. Uh, it's the story that just won't go away, and it's leading to a rare single show double drama oh, no, horn. That's right. Yeah. So last week, I told you about the explosive Rolling Stone expose about the new Queer Eye series on Netflix, or I should say the new season uh, uh, coming up on Netflix. It said that tensions were so high on the set with the cast all wanting to be, as I call it, the big head on the billboard. Well, the article also said that Tan France, you know, Tan does fashion, and Anthony, he does food in air quotes, uh, campaigned to have Bobby Burke, who does the interior design, replaced with their friend Jeremiah Brent, which eventually did happen. Well, the allegations led to Tan uh, sharing an Instagram video saying that Bobby was actually fired by Netflix. And that and that, and Tan's like, um, I didn't have anything to do with my friend Jeremiah being hired. He said he was simply the best person for the job. The video was liked by JVN, who is in his own, or they're, they're in their own heap of trouble, and Anthony. Mm -hmm. Here's, I'm sure that Tan wasn't fully responsible, and I would have appreciated Tan putting to rest some rumors. If you, you know, there's things to said about you in the press and gossip rags you want to, uh, but what I didn't like and where he lost me and probably a lot of fans is he threw in a real shady moment at the mm -hmm. beginning where he said, my, f and this is almost verbatim, he says, um, it's not my fault that my former colleague was fired. <laughs> if you, now, and if you don't follow the story and you're not, and you're not, uh, nobody knew Bobby was fired. No. That was never the story. He said he left. He left. Mm -hmm. The press release said that he left. Nobody said Bobby was fired mm -hmm. until Tan did that. Right. Which is, you, you negated all the goodwill that you could have with that clearing up message by being real unnecessarily shady. Mm -hmm. Because I went back and I read Bobby's interview on yes. Rolling in Rolling Stone. Bobby handled this whole situation with grace. He didn't bash Tan. He goes, yeah, 
we had a falling out, but it wasn't that big of a deal. And it wasn't romantic. It, it wasn't was romantic. It yep. wasn't. Um, it wasn't anything scandalous. And then for Tan to do that, mm -hmm. I think it's it's in bad taste. And mm -hmm. I have a feeling that show is built on friendship, fake or not. Mm -hmm. They net, Netflix sells that show as five great friends yeah. um, doing some good. It's gonna suffer because mm -hmm. now that facade is broken. Yep. Hashtag Ellen. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We're glad you're here. Well, I say this every week. We receive lots of feedback from you uh, about the show, what you like, what you don't like, <laughs> suggestions, <laughs> constructive criticism, um, not so constructive criticism. <laughs> hey, but we open it all. We read it all. Leo, activate the Jason Show mailbag. Here we go. You've got mail. <laughs> let's, let's start with a new viewer. This is Trudy, love that name, Trudy from Illinois. She goes, hey, Jason, I discovered the show a few months ago, and I don't miss a day. I record it every day and enjoy watching it every evening. And Trudy says, I also love the fast food field trips, especially with Kendall. Please keep including her and buy her a sandwich when she wants one. Yeah. She's, hung she's a hungry new mom, for heaven's sake. Thanks for all the fun and laughter. <laughs> um, a, buy your own sandwich. Two, uh, True. two, that's not part of the bylaws of the fast food field trip. <laughs> now we have Consult bylaws? the manual. Okay. Um, we have bylaws I know, now. that was so funny though, because you really did. Uh, people think I'm joking. How many times did we threaten to kick you out of the car? Like, literally, there's so many that weren't even on. On the tip, yeah. <laughs> Mike, Jeff, I think we, we pull over and just leave her on the side of the road. Yeah. Maybe then Jordan will find her eventually. Yeah. yeah. Next, Erica from Washington. Hi, Erica. She writes, I can't tell you how much joy your show adds to my day. As a lifelong resident of the Seattle area, you have all made me seriously consider moving to Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. From the Daily Crew to your regular guests, I just want to be friends with every one of you. Thank you for being so genuine and sharing your lives with us. Uh, and she talked about my dog, Dexter. She writes, Dexter reminded me of my own boxer, Lucy. I'm sure they're playing together now. Yeah, that's so sweet. Again, y'all with Dexter, I can't say it enough. And I'm sure I, I, I wish I could send and say thank you to everybody, but I'm just gonna occasionally do it here. Thank you for everything that you sent. I have Dexter on keychains and tablets and sheets, and, and I really, really, really appreciate it. I'm very but we do have fun. She's we right. We do have fun, other than the ranch thing. That other than that, fun. yeah, no. You guys had fun, though. Yeah, we, we do. We laugh. You would want to <laughs> hang out with us. We're real fun socially. We are. Yeah. Anyway. When I'm invited. When you're invited, yeah. 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 Last week, uh, I did a fire, we call them Jason's fireside chats. I did a fireside chat about being a people pleaser. And there's been um, a really nice response from you all. And I was hoping that would be the case uh, because I didn't think I was alone in this. Debbie says, oh my goodness, Jason, your latest fireside uh, chat was so inspiring. I've been working for so long on speaking up for myself. I've made progress, but still have a long way to go. Your chat inspired me to try harder and I needed that. Carrie says, thank you for your fireside message today. I just uh, had a big fight with a close friend. And when I finally spoke my truth to her, her insecurity and in our friendship started to shake out too. Speaking your truth for the win. I really appreciate your bravery. And Amy says, your fireside chat hit me. Thanks for sharing your true self. I appreciate your words and can relate so much. I never want to rock the boat. And Mary says, kudos for your bravery, Jace. I'm 66 and just learning how to advocate for myself. Human beings are always humane, uh, uh, but we can, uh, yeah, or aren't always humane, but we can be. Thank you. Yeah, I, you know, I, um... <laughs> If you missed it, if you missed it, I don't want to leave you out. I just, I just wanted to talk to you. I had what seemed like a very, I had three small moments with my, my dear BFF. And I hope that you can try this out with someone that you trust, with my Hey Hey Haley. And I just, uh, my British friends call it, advoc Jason, 
advocate for yourself. <laughs> so I advocated for myself in small ways, uh, telling her that I didn't want to sit in the back of her Honda because I'm 6'2", and I didn't want to, you right. know, and... Really I, small things. Really but. small things, and I didn't want to... She put me in a situation where I was with three strangers. Like, I had never met them. And I and I, I have a little bit of social anxiety, and people are were surprised to hear that, but I... It, it 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 terrorizes me a little bit and um and i i spoke out and i was mm -hmm. it was received with love right. and i hope you have a friend like Haley. we also talked about the resurgence of soap operas last week uh to that mendy says she had watched a soap since the late 80s but started watching the young and the restless uh when i was on a three-week vacation when she had nothing else to watch <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> But you can jump come back. back. You know? Yeah, please come. Don't watch the Y and R instead of us. But yeah, what? No, but I think in this era when um, there's just a lot of reality, mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, t TV is all cyclical. Uh, you know, in the 70s and 80s, uh, early 80s, it was all uh, soap operas, and then in the mid 80s to the 90s, it was talk shows, mm -hmm. and then it was court shows, um, and everything kind of goes in a cycle. And right. I think we're back in an era where people want some. They want an escape. Mm -hmm. You know. I, I I talk about, you know, where's the asteroid? The world is just nutter butters. Right. I think people want to look through the, the glass of some other families and see their nuttiness to right. make them feel better about their, their lives. Fantasy world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next, Robin writes to us, I like the show and watch it every day. However, the over-the-top clapping and cheering during the intro is ridiculous. Y'all, she coming after you. They're happy to see me. I don't know. I, uh, I'm not. I. But what was her name? Robin. Robin. Hi, Robin. I'm Jace. Um, Robin, do me a favor. Tell me where you work, and then when you walk into your workplace, I'm going to come there and clap for you. Yeah. I'm going to do that for you. Yeah. It's not a new thing, clapping no. for, it's it, looking at a talk show, I don't know. Oh, yeah. The things that bother people, though. Next, Christy enjoyed our segment last week about the common things rude people do. She goes, the family meetings at the bottom of escalators reminded her of her pet peeve. People who have long conversations in the middle of the grocery store aisles and often with neighbors who, can they, who they can talk to at any time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't mind the conversations, but again, get off to the side. Yes. Don't do it right in the middle of the aisle. I call them armadas. Right. They're an armada. And I'll whisper that. I'm like, you're an armada. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, separate. Anyway, thanks for the emails. We'll be right back, everybody. Back after this. <laughs> Better not clap. Better not clap. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, you know, the other thing, too, is when people write in and they're shocked or they get mad when we read their emails. It's like you're writing to a TV show. It's like, this ain't Nettie's Nail Salon. I mean, you know, we mm -hmm. we all, we might read your email. And yeah. if you mean, mm -hmm. too bad. It's what? your chance to show some love for our show. Pick up some official Jason Show swag from our online store. We have everything from T-shirts to dog collars to mugs, beach towels underwear uh, you'll even find the gray you'll even find what oh we don't have those anymore oh. yeah there was a limited sold out, sold out. Sold out. <laughs> you'll even find the gray sweatshirts that I'm loving recently uh, point your camera at the QR code and it'll take you directly to the store we also have links on our socials we'll be right back back after this everybody <laughs> Okay. Oh yes. Um, this is the ranch stuff that we hated earlier. Who wants to try it? We Don't have like a minute. It. Anybody? Come on. Come on. Live television. Oh my Thank God. you. I'm gonna just get out of the way. Get out of the way. There we go. Go ahead and go ahead and try that. Okay. There we go. Gerd, keep an eye on her face. Get a close up of her. There we go. Let's see. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, here we go. I did. Okay. Put more. You you, you like, like it? it? Here you go. You can have the whole. Here, you want here? Try some. Right there. Yeah, try. They're lying. That's They're all lying. No, that's actually pretty good. Oh. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? No, it's a big no. Don't get this. And yeah, it's like no. Sorry, right? Iowa. <laughs> it's a 
<laughs> Tomorrow on the show, we can't wait. Star of the Golden Bachelor, Leslie Fema, will join me in studio for the hour tomorrow. So if you want tickets, go to eventbrite.com. That's going to do it for us. Go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Don't buy this. <laughs> buy the other flavors.